I grew up in a home where I was surrounded by musical instruments as I shared in the children's sermon this morning. It seemed around every corner there was some kind of instrument that we could play, a piano, an organ, there were a variety of guitars, both acoustic and electric, and even a bass guitar. There were mandolins and banjos. We even had an accordion, even an accordion, and I played them all as a child. Do any of you play musical instruments? Any of you? If you do, raise your hand. Yeah, what do you play? Where are the piano players? Uh, I've got a few. Where are the uh, guitar players? <laughs> Where are the clarinet players? <laughs> right there. As it so happened, my sixth grade year came around, and I wanted to be in the band. And I had to choose an instrument. And I thought, what instrument would I choose? I chose the drums. I wanted to be a percussionist. So now, in addition to all those instruments that I just shared with you, we now had drums in the Atkinson home. And we were, I was always playing them. And my two younger brothers, they followed in their big brother's footsteps. And they, too, played the drums. My parents didn't know what hit them. Wow. All of that racket, all of that banging. Maybe they thought they were being punished. I don't know. As a matter of fact, there's an old ancient proverb that says, If thine enemy wrongs thee, buy each of his children a drum. Why is that? Drummers are always getting a bad rap. Have you guys noticed that? Maybe not. They're always the butt of jokes, it seems. Case in point, maybe you've heard of a little band that came out of Liverpool called the Beatles. Anybody ever heard of the Beatles? Now, let me ask you this. This is a little, little experiment that I'm conducting here, a scientific experiment. Which member of the Beatles have people always made fun of? Was it John? Was it Paul? Was it George? Was it Ringo? Yes. <laughs> People always made fun of Ringo. Drummer jokes, those have to stop. At any rate, turning to more spiritually minded things, I wonder what musical instrument God plays. What does God play? I mean, what instruments, if any, are there in heaven? Any instruments in heaven? You know, I don't know. I'm not exactly sure. But it's been said that God is like a master musician. A master musician, and God has instruments that he uses in the world today. Now, with this thought of God as the master musician in mind, Back in 2000, I had the opportunity to take a pilgrimage to Italy. And I journeyed through all of the, the places there in Italy, Rome and Pisa and Florence and Venice. However, there was one place that I visited on the pilgrimage that really had a profound impact on me and my ministry. And that place is called Assisi. And it is the home to a man by the name of St. Francis. Now, who is St. Francis? St. Francis, St. Francis had a great love for people, a great love for God, as well as for animals and the environment. He is known as the patron saint of Italy, as well as the patron saint of ecology. And he's also known for writing a little prayer called the Peace Prayer which I'm going to share with you in its entirety a little bit later in the sermon. But for now, I offer you only the first line of the peace prayer. And here is what St. Francis prays. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Interesting. 
St. Francis, he recognized that God is the master musician. And Francis desired to be used as God's instrument of peace, of God's instrument of love and compassion in the world. And Francis was used in a very powerful way. He sang the love song of Jesus Christ to the whole world. He sang a new song in his life. That's nothing new, though. We go back to the Hebrew Scriptures. In Psalm 40, we see David. He's singing a new song as well. It seems he says that I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and he heard my cry. You hear a song of despair in his voice. But then he says, he lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and the mire, and he set my feet on a rock, and he gave me a firm place to stand. And listen to this. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. Interesting. Just like St. Francis, just like the psalmist David, singing a new song. God was using them as an instrument to the world. You see, we make music not only with pianos or with organs or even with our voices, which is also an instrument, but our very lives as people of faith because we are instruments. We are instruments in the hands of God who is the master Musician, God has put a new song in our mouths and a hymn of praise in our hearts. So what is that song? What is that new song? It's a love song. It's God's love song to the world. So we are all instruments in the hands of God. However, there are stages that a musical instrument must go through before it can be played, right? There are stages that an instrument must go through. The first, is, the first stage is that an instrument, first of all, must be made, right? It must be created. St. Francis asked God to make him into an instrument. And to make an instrument, it takes time and it takes effort. For example, building a piano is a long and a difficult process. Did you know that it takes over 11 months to make a Steinway Grand Concert Piano? Did you know that? Over 11 months, all of that time and all of that effort going into making that beautiful instrument. And did you know that you, as an instrument of God, that you are more valuable than any Steinway piano? Scripture says that you are made in the image of God. Scripture says that you are wonderfully made. Ephesians 2.10 says that we are God's handiwork. That means that we are God's masterpieces. So God, as our master musician, first creates us and then calls us a masterpiece. But then God is not done with us yet. Okay, so God has created us and he has called it good. But now, once an instrument is made, then what must happen? It must be tuned. An instrument is created, it's made, and then it must be tuned. And there's a big difference between an instrument that is out of tune and an instrument that is in tune, right? Let me give you a little example, if I may. I've got a guitar over here. I'm not sure how I'm going to play this thing up here. But I just want to maybe play a few little chords for you and let me know what you think. Sound pretty good? You like those chords? Is there something wrong? Some of you hear it, right? Hang on a second, let me just... 
You hear it? I don't think it's in tune. It doesn't sound quite right. It's a beautiful instrument that's been created, but it's not in tune. You know what I should do? I should probably tune this guitar, don't you think? That's what I'm going to do. Fortunately, there's a built-in tuner in the guitar. A little bit better. Okay, let me... That one's out. Let's try it now. Is that better? Yeah, that's a lot better. Man, that's a, that is a lot better. You see, there's a big difference between an instrument that is tuned and a, one that is not tuned. At times, even though we are instruments in the hands of God, sometimes our lives are out of tune, aren't they? We're out of tune. And the song that we sing with our lives doesn't sound too good to the world. Maybe it sounds like more of a song of despair or sadness or a song of anger. Either way, we're out of tune. And there are many things that cause us to get out of tune, but it all boils down to the way that we hurt one another and we hurt ourselves and the way we fall short in showing God's love in our daily lives. That causes us to, to get out of tune. As I said, this guitar has a built-in tuner, but what about you and me? When we find ourselves out of tune with God, and the, news, and the song that we sing is, is, is anything but joyful, how are we to get into tune? How do we get into tune? What are we to tune to? I think the better question is, who are we to tune to? Who are we to tune to? And the answer is simply this. Jesus Christ. Jesus is kind of like our, our tuning fork. You guys know what a tuning fork is? A tuning fork, is, it sets up, it's perfect pitch. And you, could, you can hit that tuning fork and you could tune an entire piano based on that perfect note, that perfect standard of the tuning fork. Well, Jesus is kind of like our tuning fork. You see, when we try to get in tune with the things of, of the world that are out there, it, it won't work. But with Jesus and His character and His life and His example and His revelation, that's how we get into tune. By imitating Him. He is our standard. Now, think about this for just a second. If, if we are to get into tune, then that means that God is going to have to stretch us. You notice that these strings were out of tune, right? And so in order to get them back into tune, what did I have to do? I had to turn the pegs, right? And it stretched out the strings. And I just wonder if those strings could talk as I was tuning them, what would they say? They would probably be saying, ouch, <laughs> that hurts. Stop, stop stretching me. I, I kind of like being out of tune. It's the same way with us. When we find that our lives are out of tune with the, the tuning fork of Jesus Christ, God starts stretching us. Pushing our buttons, turning the pegs. And that's what we call sanctification. It's the process of becoming more like Jesus Christ. So when you find yourself 
out of tune. You find yourself in the midst of, of difficult situations and you're feeling pain and you're feeling sorrow and maybe even suffering. Know that God is tuning you into this new song of, of Jesus Christ. So, an instrument is made and then it has to be tuned, right? And now it must be played. I mean, what good is an instrument if you don't ever play it, right? What good is that? I remember one time I had uh, some friends who bought a baby grand piano for their living room in their home. And I remember I went over, and it was a beautiful, beautiful piano. And I, I, I saw the piano, and being a musician, I thought, wow, this is wonderful. Who plays piano? And their answer was, nobody. It never gets played. It just sits there. What, what good is that? What good is an instrument if it's never played? You know, I think of the prophet Isaiah in chapter 6, verse 8. He says, Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And Isaiah said, and listen closely, Here am I, send me. Now, what Isaiah was saying was, Use me. Let me be your instrument to the world. One of the most powerful prayers that we can ever pray is, Lord, use me. Make me into an instrument. Tune me to the revelation of Jesus Christ and then play through me. The Apostle Paul to the church at Rome, he wrote these words. He says, offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. An instrument of righteousness. We are to be instruments of righteousness in the world. No, not self-righteousness. Of righteousness, of God's love, of God's presence. You are God's instrument sent forth to proclaim the master musician's glorious love song to the world. Now, once an instrument is made, and then it is tuned, and then it is played, what if us as individual instruments came together as one? As one. You know, I, I think of, uh, of, of the one sound that comes from like a symphonic orchestra. Beautiful sounds. And what great and beautiful symphonies have come forth from the likes of Beethoven and Mozart and Haydn and Mahler where those in individual instruments join together with other instruments to make one sound. For me, that is a perfect metaphor for the church for we are each instruments that have been created and have been tuned and God plays his love song to the world through us. But then when we join together as one, as a divine symphonic orchestra, wow, what a beautiful song, new song we sing to the world when we come together as one. That's the church. That's the church. Now, let me ask you this as I ask myself, and I'm getting close to closing here. Which song shall we hear at Chapel by the Sea or wherever you're from? What song should we share with the world? What is that song? What does it sound like? Well, may we all be challenged today to be instruments of righteousness Whose song shines light into the darkness? Whose song brings joy and comfort in the midst of suffering? Whose song proclaims peace in the midst of the storm? Whose song offers encouragement in the midst of fear and uncertainty? Whose song offers hope 
for what seems to be a hopeless world, whose song brings change in the midst of the status quo, whose song proclaims justice in the midst of prejudice, discrimination, and oppression, and whose song, above all, gives praise, glory, and honor to the master musician. That is our song that we are to be singing to one another and to the world. In closing, I share with you St. Francis' peace prayer in its entirety. And it goes like this. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow your love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console another. To be understood as to understand. To be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born again to eternal life. My friends, as we go from this place today, let the prayer of St. Francis be on our minds and be in our hearts. Let us be God's instruments to the world. And now to God, our master musician, be all praise, glory, and honor. Amen and amen. Let us pray. Eternal and merciful God, we gather together and we are grateful for the opportunity to worship you today in spirit and in truth. And we thank you for your word which comes to us today saying that you are the master musician and that we are your instruments that you have created, that you have tuned, and that you have now joined together to play a new song to the world. Heavenly Father, I come before you and I lift up this congregation to you for each person that is here today. And I pray that you would reveal yourself to them, that you would offer up your favor to each one. Lord, you know all of our strengths, you know our weaknesses, you know our challenges. Father, be with us and help us as we go forth. In Jesus' name, amen.